Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a CSS drop-down menu. Um, this is typically used for your navigation bars, and navigation bars, this whole thing works if you do this as an unordered list. Now, I've just got a, a nice little made-up bunch of uh, links here, and in order to turn them all into links at once, if you highlight them and just link them all to the pound symbol, they will each become their own separate A tag. I really like that. It's a total cheat in, in Dreamweaver. Um, now, of course, if you're going to do this, you're going to create a really a real navigation menu. Everything that's here on the top level, this will literally be the top level of the navigation bar. And when I mouse over the word resources, these items will pop up underneath of it. Now, there's um, I'm going to actually create all of the CSS code inside this HTML file so that it's all nice and in one place and I don't have to flip back and forth quite as much. Um, the very first selector that we are going to have to do is going to be the unordered list. Oops, it wants, doesn't want it as a class. I want to do... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I need to do one other thing. If you want to have multiple multiples of these on a page, um, I'm going to give the unordered list an, an ID first and do all of my selectors. They're all going to start with uh, pound nav bar. So that way, if you needed to, you could have multiple ones on the page and give them slightly different sets of, of things. So you could have nav bar one and nav bar two and side nav bar and whatever you want. Um, so now I need pound nav bar. Okay, I'm going to do a lot of my coding in the, a lot of it by hand. Now, when I was doing this, I actually found that this one worked a little bit better. UL, pound navbar. Um, so it grabs an unordered list with an ID of navbar. Um, for some reason, some of the selectors just seem to like that a little bit better. Some things wouldn't apply properly if I had just pound navbar. I'm not quite sure why. Now, I'm going to need that one, but I want to kind of go in... And instead of sort of showing you the finished product and just going top to bottom, I kind of want to want to build this up. Um, the first thing that I need to do is take my this unordered list and the unordered lists that are inside of it. Uh, so maybe I should go over the structure of this first real quick. You remember doing lists? If you remember, the really annoying thing about lists is that um, when you do a sublist, an indented set of bullets, that unordered list must be nested inside of a list item. I think when I first started doing these, I kept trying to do this. So it would go list item, list item, and then a sub unordered list. That will not work. It's not valid code. The, the validator will yell at you for that. Um, though it won't look any different on page and all the CSS would break. So make sure that your unordered lists are actually inside <coughs> higher level list items. Anyway, the stuff that we need to do to this is I take this guy, open up, there we go. I need to set his list type to none. I need to go to box and set the padding and margins down to zero. There we go. And now everything is a nice little, is up against the, the side there. Um, in order to do the next part, uh, to get them to stack vertically, now I'm actually going to ask for the list items inside of here. And this selector will actually grab both the top and second level list items. This basically asks for any list items, no matter how deeply they're nested, inside an unordered list with an ID of nav bar. So this will, grab, this will style all of them at once. And I'm actually going to leave these three here, because uh, some browsers want the list item to have the, um, the bullet, and some of them want the, uh, the um, unordered list. What I need on here... is where's the float on that? Oh, I know why I did that. 
actually, I'm going to need some other things on here, but not just yet. Um, I'm not going to float these to the left because what ends up happening with the nav bar is across the top, I want all of those floated left so that they form a horizontal navigation bar. But when you mouse over one, you get a vertical navigation bar under them. And one needs floats and the other doesn't. So I'm going to have to be able to separate these. The way I'm going to do that. Oh. Is actually, I can do it like this float left. And then. <laughs> I can tell the first level list items to float, but this actually tells all of them to float. Then this one comes in and says, hey, go grab the lower level ones and don't float those. Go take the float right off of them. So that's a kind of a bit of a cheat. I think it should work. Yeah. Now you can see that they're kind of lined up underneath of their individual sections. doesn't entirely. And in fact, the next step is that we actually are going to bring in some of that absolute positioning. Now, they're, they're in the right place here, but they probably won't be for long, especially once we start doing some other things to it. What we're effectively going to end up doing is taking each of these um, uh, CSS, or these links, the top level links, and making them, uh, or taking the list items and making them relatively positioned. Then these unordered, the sublists, which are nested inside of those list items, will make them absolutely positioned. So they will, no matter what we do to the top level ones, the bottom level ones will stick to them. And here's how we do that. Make sure I'm doing everything right. Actually, I'm wrong on this. It's not the list items. It's the unordered list. So I need to do ul pound nav bar space li space ul. Should actually probably be up here. And then that needs to be position absolute. Let me do top 0px left 0. It doesn't need to be PX whenever you do zero. So now what's going on is these sublists are actually they're they're overlapping because I told them to be zero zero. They're so they're shoved up in the top left corner. But now I can start to play with that. Um, oops, come back. I can instead of being ten or zero pixels off the top, I can make them one M off the top and they're going to come down just a little bit. Let's see if I can actually get this to show up in a browser. The one that will cause us problems at the end is going to be um, Internet Explorer. Imagine that. Okay, so things are kind of in the right place-ish. Um, they're still really squished together. And it's mostly because we don't have a size or a width on things. One of the rules that I'm still missing from, the, from the, the basic setup of things is going to be the unordered list, pound, nav bar, space li, space a link, and then the a visited. And what I need on that is 
display block that puts the um, box model on those A tags so I can start to um, mess with their margins and paddings and things like that. Um, I will make them all 100 pixels wide. If I do that, they stretch out a little bit more. Um, honestly, with height here, it doesn't really matter too terribly much. HEI GHT, is that right? Uh, I've seen the word height too many times now, I can't understand it anymore. So if I make the height uh, 20 pixels, that should, let's make it 30. There we go. Now everything's nice and pushed off. Now the problem is that these are kind of overlapping now because <coughs> I set that top at 1M and now that I've got 30 pixels I should probably make those all line up. Yeah, there we go. Um, other things I definitely think we should do to the all the links is text decoration none get rid of the little underlines. There they go. They're gone now. And yeah, we'll stick there for now. Uh, the other thing I think is kind of nice for this one is this min dash width 960 px. I can take the the top level nav bar and say it should always be at least 960 pixels wide. So that way, when it squishes, at least in this instance, I, I'm still I'm not building the mobile site yet. But once we're above 960, it will always be 960. Um, I could have just said width equals 960, but I don't know if you might ever want it to stretch further than that, so I can put min width. Um, you can also put, if I put max width 100%, that should work. Then it's kind of nice and stretchy. Ish. Oh, my resolution's too low to actually see it. Um, I'm just going to leave that alone for now. Just trust me, that works. Okay, so now how do we make them appear and disappear? Um, well, I want to be able to use transitions on this later. Uh, some of the CSS transition things where you can actually fade things in, and that's kind of cool. Transitions do not work going from display none to display block. So that was my, that was actually, I spent about half an hour figuring that out. So I had them all display none and then you mouse over them and they display block and they pop back in and none of the transitions would ever work. And that was why, it just, CSS has that kind of built in, doesn't, doesn't work that way. So what I'm gonna do instead is set the opacity of those layers, of those drop downs to zero and then I can, transitions of opacity is perfectly fine in CSS and I can bring that back to 100%. So let me find that in my code here. And I'm going to write myself a little note. So uh, this is only dealing with the second level the little drop downs. It's going to be UL pound nav bar LIUL. I think I had that one up there before, but that's okay. I can combine those two later if I need to. My nav bar. There we go. Oh, actually, these are supposed to be combined. It's the exact same stuff. So I might as well push this down in here need it there anymore. Okay, so those are absolute. The They're positioned pretty correctly. They're going to drop down right there. Um, and then 
opacity zero. And the other fun thing I'm going to do is width to zero, height to zero. I'll, I'll undo this later if I, if I remember, but what was going on is even when they were opacity set to zero, they were still there on the page. And even though they were invisible, if you put your mouse over them, they'd pop back into existence. And if you had anything behind them that people were supposed to be able to read or click on or maybe even try and highlight, they'd actually be grabbing this invisible nav bar. So with this, I'm at least squishing it down so that it's, it's invisible, but it also doesn't exist anymore. Um, and I'm preventing that problem from creeping up later. And if I remember at the end, I'll take those off and you can see how bad it is. Think overflow. Oh, and the last one is is that one. I don't remember why I put that in there. I'm honestly thinking that might have been to fix some problem that I fixed another way and I might not need that anymore. Um, okay, so that should mean that they are now um, they're sort of there, but if we preview it in a browser, they should be gone. Yeah. And this is the point at which Dreamweaver just goes, ah, I don't know, it doesn't know what opacity is, so it just kind of leaves it alone. But the browsers do understand it. So now I want to create something that will bring those, na those uh, unordered lists back. Change the opacity to, uh, you'll actually change it to 1. Opacity is measured on a scale from 0 to 1, so 50% opacity is 0.5 opacity. So we're going to bring it back to 1. Let me find the activations. Okay. So this is fun. This is this is kind of nuts. I'm pretty proud of this one. You take the nav bar, and when I hover over a list item, the 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 pseudo selectors link active. Those there's a couple of them that you can apply to anything, including hover. So now whenever I hover over any list item, I can actually make it so that something further down the chain, something further nested in, changes the opacity. So what you're, the way you have to think of this is I want my unordered lists to reappear when something higher up in its hierarchy gets a hover state. It's a little weird, but I think this is even enough to, to demonstrate it. Ooh, maybe not. Did I save it? Oh, sorry, I guess I have to do width auto because it's it, it did appear it's just zero height and zero width that should make sure that that fixes it might actually need to give that a specified dimension but there we go now pops up ooh kind of cool Okay, now this does say transitions, and we can actually make that uh, a part of this. Um, make sure I'm doing this right. This one's annoying because it's got to be done in three, in, in four different um, of these. Uh, we need to put in the vendor specific transition. 300 milliseconds and ease. We just put in the, these are called uh, vendor specific properties. Um, but basically, the one that's specified by CSS is transition, but it wasn't there for a while, and all the browser manufacturers were like, hey, it's going to be transition, so we'll start supporting it. But for some odd reason, they don't support the word transition, they support their own version of it. So you've got to put WebKit before it. It's the exact same thing, but you have to put. Um, dash mos and nicely I believe Opera actually supports it so you don't need to do the O one as much anymore um, and then you just do regular transition 
Now what this does is, um, the way it works is, if you have something in a different state, so this is, where's the opacity? This is what this guy, this object looks like normally. So if you have some sort of hover thing that's going to go and change its properties, CSS is just, doesn't matter what it is, if there's any kind of change on this thing, it will use this as the animation. It will take a third of a second, and there's ease, ease in, ease out, um, and basically what they do is ease is, it'll go really fast for the first hundred milliseconds, and then it'll sort of slow down for the next hundred, and then it'll speed back up for the next hundred milliseconds. I think I actually have that reversed. It's slow, fast, and then slow. Ease in means it kind of goes slow and then fast. Ease out means it's fast and goes slow. Um, so over 300 milliseconds, you're not really going to see much of a difference. If you put this over 10 seconds or something, it actually would go, you'd see a difference. Actually, let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see the difference. Ooh, fady. out. I wanted to ease. In and out has nothing to do with the hover state. It's not the mouse going in and off. Um, it's like in Flash when you're doing a... Um, what's the part where you can control the speed of something as, it, as it's going through? Ease. The ease. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So you can ease things in or ease things out. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like we've got a very nice basic structure. The thing works, the drop downs are great, and all you have to do is edit this CSS file, how, or this um, unordered list, however you want, and it takes care of itself. The, the rules are gonna apply to exactly what you want, and want them to, um, which is awesome. What do you mean? Mm. Uh, correct. I think there are other CSS transitions that'll do that. Um, and I was surprised that it going from zero to the auto height, I would have thought that that would do it too, but I was never able to get it to replicate that. I think there might actually be CSS um, transitions that would help there, but it's not working. then all of them would be the same size, no matter how many items I put in there, and I don't want that. But what I've also found is that having a, a very short transition is okay, like actually the 300 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds is actually, is actually kind of nice. Um, having long ones, especially ones where the, where the, the menu blows out, um, I find those a little bit annoying. That's my personal opinion. I try to stay away from those. Fade right in real quick. I kind of like that one. But then again, I think the internet's too slow. Colors and backgrounds and some hover uh, colors and things like that. Right now this is, it's there, but it's ugly. I mean, it doesn't have any color whatsoever to it. And we're going to need that. Um, some of the first things we'll probably want going to be font, family, I'll do trebuchet, font dash size. I can't remember how these all go together um, normally. There we go. Just a little bit nicer. Um, some hover colors would probably be, actually some background colors would be nice. So I'm going to do background dash color I don't know if you guys will be able to see this on the screen save oh. uh, 
Oh, I know what's going on. The nav bar. I didn't give it a height. Ah, I've got other weird problems. My text is, is in the upper left corner of these boxes. I made them 100 by 30. The fix for that is I've got to open up these the A tags. That's where I set the height and the width. I'm going to set the line height to 30 pixels. That will should take care of the vertical navigation. I should have done that to all of them. And if you really care about it, you can do um, text align center. I don't know that this is actually going to look good on this particular design. I think it made it make it look weird. I don't know if you like that or not. I'm going to take it off. It's an option. I mean, it's certainly some designs might call for it, some might not. But the spacing's a little weird now. Yeah. Um, I could write one that would center the top ones, but leave the bottom ones left aligned. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. So at least they're vertically centered. And oh, now we need to do the the other transition. colon focus. This one takes forever. The focus hover active. I can change the the color of those uh, so that this guy becomes color red. What that should do is now I've got can you see the color change? Okay. Um, in the same way that I did the transitions down here, I can actually set the same on the the links, and now they'll fade in. And again, I'm not sure if this will. Let me give it like a, a little bit larger, longer transition, and you might be able to see it better. See how it fades to red? Ooh, that's kind of nice. Yeah, let me set that back. Now, the one problem that I have found with all of this is, of course, Internet Explorer. It just doesn't, it does everything but the transitions. Yeah, so uh, that's okay. Uh, we can live without that. Um, I mean, it's nice for every other browser, but yeah. IE hates it. Um, now the other thing I'd like to do is add a background image to all of these list items. And the, the absolute cheating way is the pixie style rollovers where we create one graphic that has the regular style at the top and the hover at the bottom and every time you hover over it just flips the graphic up or down to whichever one you want. I've done something very specific. I've made all of my links 100 by 30 pixels. That means I'm going to make this graphic and make it 100 by 60 pixels and split it in half. This is this does not involve slicing at all. So it's good old Photoshop time. File new. 100 by 60. Call it nav nav bar since that's my ID dash BG. Um, I hadn't really thought about how I was going to do this, but uh, some pixels. Put that at the 30 mark. I think what I'll end up doing is just like uh, a little color block right here. I don't know. A green, red. Sure, something. 
something like that. And on the background here, filter, noise, add some noise. No. Uh, where's render clouds? It takes whatever your two currently selected colors is and just sort of blends them together in this mishmash. Um, and then you can do, I use, the, I'm just going to do a couple of filters over top of this just to have something on there. You're going to be monochromatic. Not too much. And I'll take this layer and duplicate it so that they're identical. And then I'll take one of them and just, uh, I don't know, uh, darken it a bit. I'm just playing around so that the two halves will be, they'll look identical, so the pixels, uh, the pixel pattern under each one is, is identical. And you won't see them sliding, they'll just flip. You, this is navbar. And I need to save this guy out. That is probably 6.7. What's it as a JPEG? Two kilobytes as a JPEG. I can look at that. So I got my little graphic here, the JPEG. I'm going to take all of the list items, every single one of them, and I hate doing this with no the A tags. This has to be done on the A tags. Set the background to navbar, no repeat. Make sure I'm grabbing the top left or top center. It doesn't really matter. They're all the same size. So now every one of these looks like this. Ah, I still have a, I didn't push anything off to the sides. If I want to do that, I will have to set the width to 90 and the padding dash left 10. There we go. Let's see if that fixed it. There we go. Now they're off the, the edge a little bit. Uh, they're incredibly <laughs> difficult to read. So I should probably change the color as well here. Uh, there's the background. Ah, there, I can read stuff now. Not that red is much better, but... Okay, so now I just need the background to flip on the transition. And that's going to be my the whole hover thing. And... I'm going to redo the entire thing for this, the repeat, no repeat, position, left, bottom. Let's see what that does. Oh, I didn't realize it would do that. That's pretty cool. It's a neat effect. It's kind of hard to read with the red. It's very hard to read. Let me see if I can make that yellow. I don't like it. I wanted it to actually just flip without. Um, what's that? Um, actually, what I think I know how I, I could fix that. I would have to then slice this. Yeah, it's because I'm just changing the background position. So that's part of the transition. It just it whatever needs to change, it animates all of it. But I think if I instead told it to go to and load a second background, a, a completely separate image. It would fade one to the other rather than doing that up-down animation. Go in and navbar BG 
That one's, I think this one's my normal, and then this one's my hover. Nope. Oh, they're in the images folder, that's why. There we go. It is actually fading one graphic into the other. So it's not quite as efficient as the pixie style, but if you want that, that jumping effect, you can do that. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to do that. It's actually kind of annoying. <laughs> so if, if you want this method, it looks like you have to use uh, two uh, split graphics. What do you think? Would you like the code so you can dissect it yourself for a while? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what I would advise is that you actually try to copy this, follow the video, make your own. Um, the one that I've been working on is a little bit more complicated. I'm trying to separate all of the colors out in their own area. So the very first thing is just the colors for the links, the colors for the link backgrounds, the hover, the hover backgrounds, and I'm trying to make a separate rule for each of those so it's really easy to just go in and just adjust the colors because that's all you're really mostly going to care about and then the sizes will be separated and then all the hover stuff, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah. <laughs>